syllabus that is quality attributes of embedded systems okay so this question is a very very important question and uh, multiple times repeated okay so this question you could be expecting in your final exam also that is quality attributes of embedded system so it is mentioned in this notes so which is provided by vdu developer dot in okay so uh, a big shout out to them and uh, this notes i will be giving you in the description okay so please go and access it by subscribing our channel and following few steps and uh, download this notes and you could read it okay so this second module is very easy it's completely based on theory and uh, if you know if you have some practical knowledge about the embedded systems you could write the answers easily in your own words okay so that uh, let us start with the video now quality attributes of embedded systems quality attributes are the non functional requirements that need to be documented properly in any system design if the quality attributes are more concrete and measurable it will give a positive impact on the system development process and the end product the quality attributes in any embedded system development are broadly ca classified into two categories okay so there are mainly two categories of quality attributes that they are operational quality attributes and non operational quality attributes okay so the quality attributes here are simply the as mentioned they, they are mentioned it as non functional requirements that is so in the characteristics in the first video we have seen all the functional requirements which is necessary for a particular embedded system to work in a specific task here the non functional requirements are the general requirements which we expect from the embedded system okay so those general requirements are what the user expects the embedded system to do okay that need not be its function okay so those things and all we are going to discuss now okay in that we are having two categories one is operational and non operational so the first is operational quality attributes okay so let us see what is this now the operational quality attributes represent the relevant quality attributes related to the embedded system when it is in the operational mode or online mode okay so it, these quality attributes are related to the embedded system when those systems are in the operational mode or online mode okay so those are the operational quality attributes so some of the important operational quality attributes are these six categories they are divided into six uh, types that is one is response throughput reliability maintainability safe security and safety okay so these are the six important operational quality attributes so one by one let us see now each of them the first one is response so response is a measure of quickness of the system okay that is uh, in order to uh, if you want the embedded system to be working properly it should be having an opposite reaction right so that reaction is called as the response time for example again i'm i'm going to take a, a example of fan only so if we switch on the if we make the switch on its immediate response is that the fan will start rotating okay so that is the response it gives an idea about how fast the system is tracking the changes in input variables most of the embedded systems demand fast response which should be almost real time okay for example they have given one example an embedded system deployed in flight control application should respond in a real time manner okay any response delay in the system will create potential damages okay to the safety of the flight as well as the passengers okay in the flight control system you would be seeing you would be having some uh, real time responses mentioned okay it is not necessary that all embedded systems should be real time in response for example the response time requirement for an electric electronic toy is not at all time critical okay so this was about response so let us get to the second one now the second one is throughput throughput deals with the efficiency of the system okay the throughput is mainly the uh, system efficiency about how long that system would be able to uh, work okay that is the what to say the range of working or the range of time at how much time the system would tolerate the surroundings okay the harsh environment or conditions and all that deals with the efficiency okay throughput can be defined as the rate of production or operation of a defined process over a stated period of time okay the rates can be expressed in terms of units of products batches produced or any other meaningful measurements in the case of a card reader throughput means how many transaction the reader can perform in a minute or an hour or in a day okay throughput is generally measured in terms of benchmark okay so what is this benchmark a benchmark is a reference point by which something can be measured okay 
benchmark can be a set of performance criteria that a product is expected to meet a standard product that can be used for comparing other products of the same product line okay so that benchmark is the uh, what to say a range okay it could be mentioned as a range of any uh, uh, embedded system that for how long it that would be efficient for that particular task to be operated so this was about throughput so then we have reliability reliability is a measure of how much percentage you can rely upon the proper functioning of the system or what is the percentage susceptibility of the system to failure okay system system reliability is again defined using two terms so these two terms are very very important terms okay so the first term is mean time between failures that is represented as mtbf and next is mean time to repair that is mentioned as mttr okay so for what are what are this mean time between failures this mean time between failures mtbf gives the frequency of failures in hours weeks and months whereas mean time to repair that is mttr it specifies how long the system is allowed to be out of the uh, out of order following a failure okay for an embedded system with critical application need it should be of the order of minutes okay so these two terms you need to be remembering then after that we are having one more term that is maintainability so what is this maintainability maintainability deals with the support and maintenance to the end user or client in case of any technical issues or product failures or on the basis of a routine system checkup okay that is maintainability in order to maintain your embedded system what you do you do for example if you take mobile phones okay you do the servicing or uh, fans if there is any error uh, in the fans if there are if it's making any problem what you do you do the servicing right so that's why the maintainability should be very very important in order to uh, keep in order to the work the embedded system for a long period of time okay so the maintenance is very very important reliability and maintainability are considered as two complementary disciplines which is required for the embedded system a more reliable system means a system with less corrective maintainability requirements and vice versa maintainability can be cla uh, broadly classified into two categories here so first is scheduled or periodic then we have maintenance to unexpected failures okay preventive maintenance and corrective maintenance maintainability is also also an indication of the availability of the product of for use in any embedded system design the ideal value for availability is expressed as the availability formula so this formula you should be remembering very very important formula okay so there is one simple numerical here in this just below this that i'm going to discuss it based on the formula okay that availability formula is given as ai is equal to mtbf so what is mtbf i've told you mean time between failure divided by mtbf plus mttr mttr is the mean time to repair okay so this was about maintainability so next one is security so under security what we have confidentiality integrity and availability are the three major measures for information security confidentiality deals with the protection of data and application from the unauthorized disclosure so this is confidentiality then we have integrity integrity deals with the protection of data and application from the unauthorized modification and availability deals with the protection of data and application from the unauthorized users okay a very good example for security that I mentioned here that is aspect in an embedded product is a personal digital assistant that is pda the PDA can be either a shared resource, for example, PDA is used in lab setups, okay, or an individual one. If it is a shared one, there should be some mechanism in the form of a user name and password to access into a particular person's profile. This is an example of availability. So this example is um, mostly used by everybody, okay. If you want to open the mobile slot, what you do, you keep on set of password, right, so that any other person could not access it. So that's why that is the simple example of the availability okay or the security okay also all data and applications present in the pda need not be accessible to all users so what and all they mentioned here is right so it's not required that this so these points only are required okay so security uh, when you heard the term security what comes to your mind that you could write it in your own words but the meaning should not change okay so while you write in the exam you should be keeping that in mind so let's skip this now Next is safety. Safety deals with the possible damages that can happen to the operator's public and the environment 
due to the breakdown of an embedded system or due to the emission of the radioactive or hazardous materials from the embedded products. So the breakdown of an embedded system may occur due to the hardware failure or the firmware failure or the software failure. Okay, so safety part is very very essential for embedded system in order to keep the embedded system safe what you should be doing you should be checking the hardware hardware components okay uh, before purchasing any embedded system you should be knowing the hardware components what and all are used to build that okay and you should be checking for any side effects if there are any side effects in those hardware or software components okay in order for the safety of the embedded system safety analysis is a must in product engineering to evaluate the anticipated damages and determine the best course of action to bring down the consequences of the damages to an acceptable level okay so some of the safety threats are sudden uh, like uh, are sudden like product breakdown and some of them are gradual like hazardous emissions from the product okay so this was about safety so this is that numerical example here you see here which i was talking about for availability so they have given here the mean time between failure that is mtbf of an embedded product is four months okay they have given it as four months and the mean time to repair that is mttr of the product is two weeks okay so they have given once one in terms of months and one in terms of weeks here what is the availability of the product so you should be keeping in mind that mtbf and mttr whatever they might give in months or weeks you should be converting them into number of days okay so here they have given see here MTBF is equal to 4 months. So approximately if you consider a month equal to 30 days. So 4 months would be equal to 34 are 120 days. Then we have MTTR that is 2 weeks. So consider a week uh, a week would be having 7 days. So 2 weeks that is 7 2 are 14 days. Now calculate the availability. Okay. MT, for, use the formula MTBF divided by MTBF plus MTTR that is 120 divided by 120 plus 14 that is 134. So if you divide 120 divided by 134, you would be getting approximately the answer as 0.89. Okay. And if you convert this into percentage, multiply by 100, you would be getting 89.55 percentage. Okay. So like this, any one kind of problem they might be asking under the, uh, if they ask the availability concept, they would be asking one problem. Okay. As a sub question. So you should be ready for this as well. So these were the operational quality attributes. Now we are having one more category that is non-operational quality attributes. Okay. So let us see now what are these. The quality attributes that needs to be addressed for the product not on the basis of the operational aspects are grouped under this category. Okay. So some of the important non-operational quality attributes are mentioned here. Okay. So there are five, one, five of them. That is first is testability and debuggability then evolvability, portability, time to prototype and market per unit and total cost. Okay. So these are some of the non-operational quality attributes. Okay. So let us see now. First is testability and debuggability. So th this deals with basically the testing of the embedded system. Okay. The testing is simply, uh, it would be, uh, for example, if you are going to buy any product, what you do, you just uh, check the features and test some of the uh, cameras, whether it's working or not, right? So that is basically the testability. So the testability deals with how easily one can test his or her design application and by which means he or she can test it. See, for an embedded product, testability is applicable for both the embedded hardware as well as software. Embedded hardware testing ensures that the peripherals and the total hardware functions in the desired manner, whereas the firmware or the software testing ensures that the firmware is functioning in the expected way okay debug ability in other hand is the means of debugging the product as such for figuring out the probable sources that create the unexpected behavior in the total system it has two aspects in the embedded system development context namely hardware level debugging and software level debugging so hardware debugging is used in figuring out the issues by created by the hardware problems whereas the software debugging or the firmware debugging is employed to figure out the probable errors that appear as a result of flaws okay so this flaws means there are small small slight errors which is present in that embedded system in the firmware so next is evolvability so evolvability you see here for an embedded system quality attribute evolvability refers to the ease with which the embedded product which includes both hardware as well as firmware 
can be modified to take the advantage of the new firmware or hardware technology. So the modification, so for embedded system modification, if you do, if you modify your any embedded system uh, based on the updated software or updated hardware, that how that system would be getting evolved to that particular hardware or software is the mean of evolvability. Okay. Next we have portability. Portability is a measure of system independence. Okay. An embedded product is said to be portable if the product is capable of functioning as such in various environments. Okay target processors, controllers and embedded operating systems. So this portability is simply the wide range of an embedded system to work in various environments. Okay. It is not this embedded system should be in such a way that it should be uh, adapt. It should be adaptable to any of the environment and it should be giving the performance based on the conditions of the environment. Okay. A standard embedded product should always be flexible and portable. Okay. In embedded products, the term porting represents the migration of the embedded firmware written for one target processor. For example, Intel x86 to a different target processor. For example, say Hitachi HS3 process, uh, prof, uh, processor. Okay. If the firmware is written in a high level language like C, it is very easy to port the firmware. And if the firmware is written in assembly level language for a particular family of processor, say x86 family, the portability is poor. Okay. So this was about portability. So next is time to prototype and market. So time to market is the time elapsed between the conceptualization of a product and the time at which the product is ready for selling for commercial product or use for non-commercial products. So time to prototype and market means simply uh, marketing, marketing you all might be knowing, but the prototyping is just to have a soft copy of your embedded system, if you want to sell it to the market, you should be having one soft copy in order to attract the user. Okay, so that is basically the prototyping. The commercial embedded product market is highly competitive and time to market the product is a critical factor in the success of a commercial embedded product. So the competitor might release their product before you do the technology you used might have superseded with the new technology. Okay, you should be these two sentences means that you should be adaptable to the changes in the environment. Okay, based on that changes, you should be try to uh, analyze. Uh, we should be try to improve the uh, prototyping of your embedded system in the uh, uh, with respect to the changes in the environment. Okay, product prototyping helps a lot in reducing time to market. Prototyping is an informal kind of rapid product development in which the important features of the product under consideration are developed. The time to prototype is also another critical factor. Okay. So hope you understood this time to prototype and market. So then we have these things are not required. So till here it's enough. Okay. So these were some of the important quality attributes of the embedded system, which I wanted to discuss.